Hello everyone and welcome back to Approaches in Psychology. Today we're going to be looking at the psychodynamic approach, one of the oldest, most influential and particularly by modern scientific standards, more controversial approaches in psychology. There is quite a lot to cover in this lesson, so because of that this video is only going to cover the outline, including an example 6 marker at the end. If you need the evaluation points or some example exam questions, a link to that video should be on your screen now so you can head over and check that out. The link will also appear at the end so you can move straight onto that one once you're done with this video if you want. So let's make a start. The psychodynamic approach was put forward by Sigmund Freud and it's an approach that describes various forces, most of which are unconscious, that operate on the mind and direct human behaviour and experiences. The approach revolves around three or four central ideas. The concept of the unconscious, the idea that personality has a discernible structure and comes about through progression through the psychosexual stages of development, and that unconscious conflicts brought about by this whole process are mediated by defense mechanisms. So, at the heart of the psychodynamic approach is the concept of the unconscious. Freud suggested that the part of our mind that we know about and are aware of, the conscious mind, is only the tip of the iceberg, and that in fact the majority of our mind is made up of the unconscious, which he described as a vast storehouse of biological drives and instincts, all of which have a significant influence on our thoughts, our behaviour and our personality. He also said that the unconscious contains threatening and disturbing memories that have been repressed or locked away and forgotten about, and that these memories can be accessed during dreams or through slips of the tongue. Just Bubbling under the surface of our conscious mind is the pre-conscious, which contains thoughts and memories which aren't currently in conscious awareness, but we can access them if we desire to do so. So, that is the first part, and having a clear understanding of what the unconscious is, and also kind of understanding that a lot of what goes on in the psychodynamic approach actually does occur in the unconscious mind is going to be a really, really key factor to kind of fully understanding this approach. So now let's have a look at the structure of personality. Freud describes our personality as tripartite, which means that it consists of three parts. And those parts are the id, the ego, and the superego, all of which develop at different times and are responsible for different things. So, the id is the primitive part of our personality. It's present from birth and it's described as a mass of unconscious drives and instincts and urges. It operates on what's known as the pleasure principle. It wants what it wants when it wants it and it's completely selfish and demands instant gratification of its needs. Imagine a baby screaming at you because it wants something. You can't reason with it, you can't tell it to be quiet or anything like that. You just have to satisfy what it wants and then it quiets down again. That's effectively what the id is. The second part to develop at around the age of two is the ego. Now, the ego works on the reality principle and it strives to satisfy the id's desires in a realistic and socially appropriate way. Weighs up the costs and benefits of an action before deciding to act upon or abandon the impulse. It also acts as a mediator between the other two parts of personality, attempting to reduce the conflict between the demands of the id and the demands of the superego. And it does that by employing what's known as defense mechanisms, which we'll have a look at in a little while. The final part of personality is the superego. Now the superego is formed at the end of the phallic stage of psychosexual development around the age of five. 
It's our internalized sense of right and wrong, and it's based on the morality principle. It represents the moral standards of our same-sex parent, and it punishes the ego through feelings of guilt, but also rewards the ego with pride when it does something correct. Effectively, the superego tries to perfect and civilise our behaviour, and it works really, really hard to suppress all of the unacceptable urges of the id, and it tries its best to make the ego act upon some idealistic standards rather than upon realistic principles. Now, as I said earlier, Freud suggests that the id and the superego are in constant conflict with each other. And just by looking at what's on the screen now and seeing what actually the id and the superego stand for and what they're involved in, it's no surprise that they are in constant conflict with each other. The id has these primal urges, always wanting and craving for stuff, some of which can be disturbing or even destructive, whether it's food, sleep, sex, violence, or anything. And the superego's constant need to hold us to some kind of higher standard, some kind of idealistic standard, and then it punishes us if we don't uphold that standard. So it falls to the ego to mediate between the two other elements. And the ego does that through defense mechanisms. Now these defense mechanisms are unconscious and they stop the ego from being overwhelmed by threats or by trauma or by the demands of the id or the superego. Now unfortunately they generally involve some kind of distortion of reality and they're generally regarded as psychologically unhealthy if they're used in the long term. Effectively it's a little bit like putting a pretty picture over a crack in the wall. It's going to look nice and do the job in the short term, but if you leave it there for too long, your house is going to fall down. And that's kind of the same deal with defense mechanisms. Now, some defense mechanisms that people use fairly regularly are things like denial, repression, and displacement. Denial being the refusal to acknowledge some aspect of reality. Repression is forcing a distressing memory out of your conscious mind and refusing to deal with it. And displacement is transferring feelings from a true source of distressing emotion onto a substitute target. So as a final element of the psychodynamic approach, we have the psychosexual stages. Now, according to Freud, our personality develops as we progress through five stages of psychosexual development. And these are five stages that children must pass through in order to be psychologically healthy and well-adjusted in adult life. Each stage is marked by a different conflict that the child must resolve in order to progress successfully to the next stage. And any conflict that remains unresolved leads to a fixation where the child becomes stuck and then potentially carries certain behaviour and conflicts associated with that stage through to adult life. And you can see the stages there. There is oral, anal, phallic, latency and genital. And you can see the conflict of each stage as well. So in the oral stage, the conflict is weaning off the breast or off the bottle. Now, effectively, if you're going to remove the word conflict, it is effectively a developmental milestone. The milestone is weaning off the breast and going over to food or proper food. And you can see the adult fixation. If the child doesn't master this conflict or resolve this conflict within the given time frame, then it can go on to things like smoking, overeating, nail biting. And that is what's known as an oral fixation. Now, some of these stages and conflicts are fairly self-explanatory, and they are ones that you could just about get your head around. For example, the oral stage, like we just said, the developmental milestone is weaning, and unsuccessfully weaning within a certain time would potentially lead to an oral fixation. Or if you're going to take the anal stage, the developmental milestone is potty training. And if you don't potty train within the given time frame, it can lead to people being overly messy or overly neat when they're adults. And that's known as being anally retentive. Okay. Now, 
There are other stages that are slightly more bizarre. So, for example, in the phallic stage, which is the third stage, Freud suggests that boys develop incestuous feelings for their mothers. And they also develop a murderous hatred for their fathers, who they consider to be rivals in the love for the mother. And that's known as the Oedipus complex, which makes up a really, really important part of the psychosexual stages of development. Now, during this time, the boys experience something called castration anxiety by their fathers, which effectively means the boys are scared that dad is going to realise how they feel about mum, and then dad is going to come and castrate them. So, as a result of that anxiety, the boys repress their feelings for their mothers, banishing them into the depths of their unconscious mind, which technically means that the feelings are still in there somewhere, but let's not think about that. And then as a result of that, they start to identify with their fathers. They internalise the gender roles, they internalise the father's values and morals, which then ultimately leads to the resolution of the Oedipus complex, and also ultimately leads to the development of the superego. So that is the end of the outline, and it's probably a good idea to just let that sink in for a sec, because there's quite a lot there, and some of it is fairly bizarre, and you might just need to take a little bit of time to just kind of get your head around it. On that note, there is a lot of information and a lot of individual components to the psychodynamic approach. It's fairly standard because this is now considered year two material, and so it's fairly normal to get quite a lot of information because part of the trick is now going to be to actually whittle down everything that you've learned into stuff that's important when it comes to writing an outline. The good news is you won't need to include all of this when you do write an outline. However, it is still going to be really important for you to understand all of the processes that underpin this approach because they can come up in all kinds of questions, whether they are application questions, essay questions, short answer questions, you name it. It can all be tested in some form or another, which you will see at the end of the second video, which you can have a look at once we are done here. Okay. So just to finish off then, I'm going to show you what a six mark answer could look like for this approach. Bear in mind there is a lot of information and that automatically means that the outline is going to be quite long. So this is how I would do it personally. I would write a little bit of an introduction because as I'm sure you're aware from previous videos, I'm fairly fond of introductory paragraphs because they just set the scene. It's also a nice opportunity to get all of the keywords into one paragraph so that the examiner knows that you know them. I would then talk about the unconscious in less detail as you heard it previously, but in enough detail for the examiner to know that you know it. Then comes the personality and the fact that it has three components. Again, you can see there isn't very much detail on each of them, but there is a little bit. And then finally, I would talk about the psychosexual stages. Now, as you can see, just by looking at it, I have given a little bit more detail to the psychosexual stages, but that's fine. It doesn't really matter. It's just about getting the right amount of depth and breadth. Now, what I have done here, however, is I have left out any kind of detail on the defense mechanisms. The only thing that I have done is in my first paragraph, I've said that the unconscious conflicts are mediated by defense mechanisms, but I haven't talked about them any further than that. I don't need to. I've got enough detail throughout and talking about the defense mechanisms aren't going to add anything to my outline. Okay, so that was the outline for the psychodynamic approach. The link to the evaluation section should be appearing on your screen now, so you can go ahead and check that out if you need to. I hope it's been useful, I hope it's made sense, and I'll see you in the next one. Thanks very much for listening.